we got Raj. Raj, Sunda. Raj, beautiful. What would you like to say? Hey, Harry. Sorry. First time. Uh, been listening to you for the last maybe, I don't know, six months perhaps. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, took, 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 you took your time to come to the show? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. It's been, uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, just took my own time. Uh, but I, I was going to ask a question, but your previous guest, like his name is Sultan, he kind of went in the same direction, so I'm going to change my question slightly. Right. Um, about... I read a book about 20 years ago from V.S. Naipaul. I don't know, you may have read it called Beyond Belief. It was a bit of a travel history where he travels to Iran, Pakistan, Indonesia, and all the Muslim countries. And it was very insightful. It's been a while that I read the book, but there was a piece at the very end of the book that I thought captured very beautifully. He said, you know, different societies, different people have different emotion attached to it. And he said, one thing I notice in Muslim societies is the emotion of rage. Like rage is a very important emotion. Not necessarily that everybody's rageful or angry all the time, but rage as an emotion used for political purposes and rage is out there in the society. And that kind of is the motivating force to drive Islamic society. So, you know, you gotta be angry. and Perhaps Prophet Muhammad used it to, I don't know, to change the ways in whatever seventh century, and you know, and he brought about change and it drives people that you don't tolerate injustice or whatever, right? So that's like an energy force that revolves around it. And I don't know the equivalent word for it, but the word fitna comes to me, like you know, fitna is very essential. Like you never let an Islamic society settle down, like you know. If things are stabilizing, settling down, and they they kind of enjoy life and they move away from Islam, you know, they have wine, women, wealth, and everything is great, then whatever, the clergy will be annoyed and they will go, okay, let's find an issue. We will drive it. And my, and my question is really, and now I'm going to stereotype a little bit. I grew up in India, so there is kind of like a civilizational uh, lesson that is kind of uh, unwritten law that people say, hey, you know, when you're when you're discussing with a Muslim, avoid Islam. Don't don't talk <laughs> religion with them, please. Because you know, you can sit there and you may be overrating discussion, you know, just because at some point he's gonna get pissed off and he's gonna pull a knife and stab you. <laughs> just stay away. Again, okay? I'm, I'm stereotyping here, not everybody's that way, but it kind of tied me to what VS Nightwell wrote that. Is rage like an emotion? And 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 I, second part to that question is, let's say there is reformation and there is change in Islamic societies kind of move away from religion, which we want them to do in some way, shape or form. And, you know, yesterday I saw a video about Estonia being the least religious country, you know, which means religious doesn't matter. But where do you see if it all were to happen and dream comes true and Muslims will not follow Islam, but what do you think will preoccupy the mind? What, where can you take them to signs or a way? Because it's so central to even Muslims here in, in New York, you know, they are more religious sometimes. And so for the good part, and I see the good side of them. I don't see the, the angry Islam that you see in the subcontinent, but still it's all about Islam. They got to follow something. So, it's a two-part question, the idea about rage and where if you take them away from Islam, what would Muslims do? I mean, this has been the core of who they are in a lot of the Muslim societies. Right. Okay. Well, I was waiting for my turn. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I was joking. Um, okay. So first of all, I, I haven't read the book, but uh, rage has always been, we've always said it, Islam is the only religion right now is the most aggressive one. Some people say Scientology, but it's not as aggressive because it's developed in a developed country and they have their own dirty tactics. But Islam has matured for over 14 centuries and um, there is rage. There's no doubt about it. Uh, even if you show it to a moderate Muslim a cartoon of Muhammad will say, hey, ha, 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 look at this guy, Muhammad. Uh, there's a good chance he might punch you or he might curse you. And then he walk, walk away. Again, not all of them, but even uh, the obviously majority probably wouldn't. Um, but uh, but if you repeat it over time, you never know who you push over the edge. So there is, there is rage. There is anger about that. And 
when you remove that element, they're perfectly fine. That is a classical example of how religion can poison someone's mind and, and it can make otherwise good people do horrible things. So rage is a primary ingredient of Islamic dogma. So that's, that's one thing. Again, I'm not saying all of them are like that, uh, but a lot of them do behave that way. Um, but, but the argument, someone might make the argument that, well, if you call someone, if you make someone uh, a fan of someone's body shape or if you keep cursing them or something, uh, then, you know, they might react that way too. That's kind of true. But uh, that, that becomes personal. So majority of the world's population react to personal insults, but <laughs> but a lot of Muslim population reacts to ideological insults. Oh. So that is something that need to reevaluate. Um, the, the the second part of you uh, you said that people in the West as well, you've seen them how uh, even in New York and don't discuss it with uh, with with uh, with them. Look, if you want to keep the peace, if you want to keep friendship with your Muslim friend probably not best to debate with them again that is not to say actually no I'll, I'll take it back that that's actually what those people say that don't debate with them i would say debate with them um and, and be as polite as you can obviously when we t speak face to face there's a different way of doing it I, I remember once i was in my cricket club and there was this guy who came out of nowhere i had never seen him but he he had gray hair and he was trying to be very smart and everything and we had all these uh, Aussie folks around us and they didn't want to get involved and then somehow the conversation went to him claiming that oh 9-11 was an inside job and it was George Bush who did it and yeah uh, you know some, something like that yeah. so, so I, I I obviously lost you know I lost it and I, I lose it a conspiracy theorist um so I so I ended up very heated debate or something and then he said you know like Muslims are victims and it's you know like I, I just lost it and so it almost came to punch on, uh, <laughs> but um, but but you know, like as I said, I, I, I don't I don't hold myself back. But then I was like, I just called him names, and he called me names or whatever. And then, but then then these white folks, the Aussies, are looking at like, what the hell are these two yeah. brown people? Doing? <laughs> yeah. But again, you know, the point is, um, uh, the, the, there is rage, and me obviously, uh, it looks bad on bad on me if I have rage. I don't have rage, but um. People say that don't talk about them, but I said that would be bad. That would be discriminatory, and that would be insulting to assume that Muslims are not capable of having a dialogue. Most people I have, uh, even, even you know, face to face, when I have, I love talking about religion. People say don't talk about religion. I said no, it's great to talk about religion. We end up having disagreement. Most people end up okay. Uh, albeit you know your arguments well, otherwise you're going to look like an idiot. So just know some basic, off the cuff, straight arguments on atheism and if you know them you can always uh, you know like some traditional ones like you can always classic argument you can trap them who created god then everything created by god then who created god oh yeah you know he's always been there so yeah yeah all right so there's, there's some standard arguments so as long as you keep them it's okay this this you're not going to end up in punching you know punch up arguments and uh, you know i have a quick, right. yeah i have a quick comment there too and i, I kind of try reading about the history of this because People are the same. I believe they are the same. And when you have religion, for whatever reason, religion has come to stay, right? The evolution is there and nothing is static and nothing is stagnant. So it will change. And every, changing. Yeah, every religion will go through that phase where it starts questioning the original foundations and the creation. So I heard Islam had that apparently in the 13th or 14th century. I don't know that. The, the Persian or the Arabic term for it, but that movement was killed. Everybody who who encouraged debate and all of that were killed, and moderation was completely stemmed out, and well, everything they usually, was codified back. Into well, they usually say, "Did Islam take a wrong turn?" Religion is dogma. If you find something on the basis of uh, lack of, or, or, or in the absence of evidence, it's gonna it's going to corrupt your mind. And this is why I say people who say, oh, Hinduism, oh, you know, it's not harmful or dangerous. It's not about that. It's about, is it true or not? Because if it's, if it's objectively not supported by evidence, then of course you're going to believe in, ast um, you know, astrology and uh, black magic and, uh, you know, good omens and all of that crap, which is uh, Hinduism is full of. All yeah. right, sir, thank you very much for coming. I need to move on, take another call. Thank you. Thank you very much. To help me produce more videos like these, support me on Patreon or PayPal.